class. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's class, which is the Windsor Newton Grapes. My name is Tim DePack, and I'm from Windsor Newton, and I'll be your moderator for today's class. And I'm being joined by Shalene Louise, who'll be your artist instructor for today's class. And Shalene will be taking you through the class by providing information about the product that she's using, as well as showing you how to perform some of her favorite watercolor painting techniques, all while creating these juicy bunch of grapes using the Windsor Newton Cotton watercolor paints. There was a sketch outline for this class that was on the sign up link, and I will send that to you again in the chat for those of you that do not have that. And I'd like to remind you that upon completion of this class, there will be a survey that comes in your email. Please let us know what you thought about the class, how we did, and if there's any particular topics that you'd like to see Shalene perform in the future. Please feel free to follow along at Paint with Shalene or sit back and relax and enjoy the class. And with that, I'd like to pass it over to Shalene. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome. It is so good to see all your faces popping up in the gallery here. So today we're going to be painting a great class, like Tim mentioned. Um, let me hold this up for you. Hopefully you can see my face here. I'm not sure. So this class, I think what's going to be a good challenge in this class is we are going to be painting a bunch of little circles, um, those little sphere shapes. And so I think I have a good method for doing that kind of quickly. I'll let you be the judge of that, but we'll get into that. It's going to be a good class, um, but we're going to start by talking about some supplies and then we'll sketch and get into painting. So I'm using three different brush sizes today. I have an eight, a six, and a two. And if it's easier, I might just call them large, medium, and small brushes. Notice how all of them have a, a, a really nice point to them. If your brush is kind of looking like a, like, a, like a broom, you don't want to use that. We want to have something with a nice fine point. Um, I am using four different colors today. I've got burnt sienna, lemon yellow, yellow ochre and viridian green. And these are all cotton and watercolors. I'm using a sheet of nine by 12 cold press watercolor paper. And um, besides that, I have a pencil and an eraser. If you, um, if you have an F pencil or even an H pencil, that might be a better one to use. Um, usually a, um, a pencil that is a harder lead or not lead graphite, whatever. It, a lighter tip is going to be the best as far as not showing through your watercolor. And since what we're working on today is on the lighter side, these are fairly light grapes here. Um, just, just if you don't have that F or H pencil, just, just use a light hand today as you're sketching. And I believe that's all. I've got a paper towel, which will be important. So make sure you have a paper towel today, clean water, and we're good to go. So I'm gonna sketch this in real time. I know that many of you have probably already sketched it ahead of time, which is great, but I'm gonna show you my process for sketching. And um, okay, so I kind of like to think about my sketches in shapes. So instead of, or big blocks of shapes. So instead of just looking at every single little tiny detail, I kind of like to just be like, okay, what is the, what are the general shapes I'm seeing here? So we have the, the stem, which kind of has this, slight S bend to it. We have a leaf here. So I'll kind of get that shape mapped out. Kind of, a, it's kind of a heart shape. Notice that. So get that kind of mapped out. Um, and then for the grapes, so I'm gonna kind of just get the shape of this, um, this whole cluster. So I'm just gonna kind of draw this faint line and I, I did count how many I have here. I'm not gonna copy it exactly because I just would not be able to do that right now, but I think there's about 30 grapes. So I'm gonna just kind of try and aim for about that many. I'm not gonna count them, but I'll know, I'll know if it's too many. So I'm gonna start by just drawing some circles that are not overlapping. So just kind of here and there, all the way down. And you do want to try and make them all about the same size. All right, so after that, go ahead and start drawing some circles that are overlapping one another. So go ahead and just start drawing some circles that are behind 
the ones we drew already. And we really don't want this to look too structured, okay? We want it to feel a little bit random. And you'll notice it's a little thicker up top, kind of tapers. And it is gonna overlap my leaf just a little bit. So I'll go ahead and do that. Maybe one right there. At this point, I'm kind of just starting to be like, all right, like, <laughs> I don't want to overdo it. I think that feels pretty good. I think that's, I'll, I'll stop there. I might add another one later, but we'll see. Maybe one more down here. Okay, so then besides that, I think, I think I'm good. I'm going to go ahead and get the um, the center vein of this leaf. I don't want it to be straight. I want it to have a little bit of a curve to it. Notice how this is not just straight, right? It's got a little bit of a bend. So try and get that little bend, connect back here to this main stem, and then go ahead and draw some veins reaching out into your, into your leaf. You can go ahead and start drawing that serrated edge. Kind of looks like a little, a little knife, right? I think that these type of leaves are called toothed leaves. So it kind of has, um, let's see here. So it has this serrated kind of edge and then it dips back in and then it does that again, which kind of gives it that like kind of almost like a maple leaf. And we're gonna really accentuate that edge with our paintbrush. So you don't even really need to draw it in pencil, but I'm just doing it because I have it in my sketch. And then before we start doing any, oops, let me finish this up. Um, but for, before we do any painting, go ahead and erase any unnecessary pencil markings that you might have in this painting. So um, that line I drew, to give me a reference of where I wanted my grapes to move, the direction. Go ahead and erase any little extra lines you might have in your sketch here. Like I said, these grapes especially are gonna be on the lighter side. So I wanna make sure that I'm not having too much extra pencil lines in my finished painting. Sometimes I'm able to erase pencil markings after I finish painting. Sometimes I'm able to erase things fairly well, and sometimes it's harder. And I think it depends on how many paint layers you have, um, the quality of your paints, the quality of your paper, how deep it's, you know, the paint is seeped into your paper. There's a lot of variables. There's probably a lot of science that I don't exactly understand, <laughs> but I do find that it's kind of better. The less pencil markings you have on your paper to begin with, the better. Besides that, I do have a couple of these little flurry offshoots, little embellishments. And you don't have to have it sketched. You can kind of just do it with your paintbrush um, in real time when we're painting. And you might find that that actually feels really organic and nice to do it that way and, and not follow your guides too closely. All right, so I'm gonna hold this up for you before we get to painting. So here's what my sketch looks like. And this is a good point to get started. So I'm gonna pull this out of frame 
And let's get to mixing. So I'm going to start by doing an under layer on my grapes. So I'm going to use my larger brush here. So this is the size eight. And I'm just going to get it wet and I'm going to get a little mixture of lemon yellow and yellow ochre mixed. And yellow ochre and lemon yellow, these two very, very different types of yellow, like lemon yellow is the coolest, crispest, brightest yellow. And then yellow ochre is a mixed, kind of a grayed yellow. So it's, it's, it's almost like a brown yellow. And I want to have a mixture of these two yellows throughout our grapes. So go ahead and get a mixture of both of them. Let's just say like maybe 50-50 or so. And make sure there's a good amount of water in there as well. So what I want to do is go ahead and just, let's start on the leaves that are closest. Sorry, let's start on the grapes that are closest to the leaf because I do want these to dry the fastest. And go ahead and just cover them with this mixture of lemon yellow and yellow ochre. So it should be just kind of a neutral yellow at this point. And I like using a larger brush for this because I can hold a lot of paint in these bristles. So I'm able to move really quickly. So a large brush is great when you're covering a lot of real estate really quickly. Okay, so now I want you to grab your paper towel. I just see, I just did like maybe 10 of them. And I'm gonna take just a corner of it and I'm gonna just kind of lift out some of that yellow from the center of each of these grapes while it's still wet. And you'll find that it's not going to lighten back to white. It is going to lighten to a light yellow. Let me hold that up for you. Can you see that okay? Notice how it's a little bit darker around the edges, but the centers are a little bit lighter. And then I want you to just keep doing that for all of these grapes. And you can kind of mix it up. Maybe some grapes are a little heavier on the yellow ochre side. And some grapes are going to be a little bit heavier on the lemon yellow side. And that's good. I, I like for there to be some variety here. I don't want them all to be exactly the same. Um, and I think you'll find that it, it feels a little bit more interesting and dynamic to have kind of, you know, that variance. So this one here is a lot more bright yellow. And then maybe this one is more of a yellow ochre. And we'll do that same technique after we paint about 10 of them. Just go ahead and lift out that center. Having all those grapes, Shaleen, that's a good practice for everyone too, as they're, they're doing this technique with you mm -hmm. multiple times. Also, I was really hopeful when we when we when I first started preparing this class, it was like, like May. Maybe I think it was May, and I had just planted a couple of grapevines that my parents gave me, and turns out I was literally watering sticks for about a month and a half because all the leaves fell off of it, but I didn't realize that it meant it was dead. <laughs> so every day I was faithfully watering my sticks, and my dad was like, "Oh, those are dead." <laughs> so that was a disappointment. But we're gonna try again because I really would love to grow some grapes. My brother and his wife, they have an amazing grapevine at their house, and they brought over a ton of grapes the other day. They came over for dinner, and our son, Raphael, is obsessed with these grapes. <laughs> it's really cute. So we got to grow our own. I read earlier about them that grapes are great for you. They are, I think, a very good source of, I think it was potassium. Was really? Really? That makes sense. They're from the garden. Everything in the garden is fair game. <laughs> okay, so while this is starting to kind of set and dry, I'm just going to go ahead and, because we're going to really try and add a lot of depth to these grapes in this class, and 
it's going to take several passes. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit more depth, just using that same mixture, but just mixing in a little bit, um, maybe just a little bit less water here. <clears throat> just go ahead and start dropping it in a few places. My, my yellow mixture dried fairly light, so I'm just going to add a little bit more here. And I'm using my larger brush here, the size six, eight, eight. <laughs> but if you want to switch to a smaller brush, as you're dropping in a little bit more of a, maybe a little bit more of a, a technique that has requires a little bit more finesse, you might want to use a brush with a smaller point. But this brush is in great shape, so I am able to do quite a bit of detail work with that really sharp little tip there. So Shalina, as you're painting, I'm going to share some stuff that people put in the chat. So someone said, Patty said, if you get a lot of grapes, look up a recipe for grape pie. That's interesting. Wow. <laughs> and Nancy Kraft said that you should plant your grapevines between Mother's Day and June 7th for the best results. So we have some gardening tips and some, some food well, tips. Well, <laughs> I, I think that is when I planted mine, but... I just didn't do a good enough job of keeping it super soaked. Um, but I am curious, does anybody know about if I was to put them in in the fall? Because my plan this fall is to just kind of go to town putting in a bunch of perennial plants um, and just just right just as it gets cooler because New Mexico, it is so hot. Our summers are really intense. And so I feel like you got to put in plants when it's a little bit <laughs> cooler. But I would love to try again with the with the grapes because I'm I'm determined. All right, so this is a good place to move over to our leaves. We'll let this dry. Um, so yeah, you can maybe tell. I don't know. It, it is a little bit hard to tell. But you know, some of these definitely feel a little bit heavier on the ochre side. Some feel a little bit crisper on this lemon yellow side. And I definitely love that variance. A lot of dynamic interest doing that. All right. Cindy said, I read, she just said, freeze your grapes during the summer for a great snack. It's a good idea. They taste like little um, slushies, like little slushy bombs. And okay. someone else, when they're planting it, go by your agricultural zone to know when the right time is to plant. So I think there's probably yeah. some maps like that on the internet. Yeah, we're, we're 7B over here in New Mexico. We're 7B, but we're not like, it's just so much drier and hotter than other 7Bs. It's really intense. Um, and it's been especially dry this year. So, okay, so let's move over to the leaf, leaf here. I'm gonna do a mixture using my same brush here of yellow ochre and viridian green. And viridian green is like, I would say this is kind of a new, this is a new favorite color. I used to always just kind of rely on sap green, which I still love sap green. But I do find that viridian is great for mixing. You can get a lot of shades of green. Um, just a very pure color, viridian green. So I'm gonna use a little bit of yellow ochre, which is my very warm, warm yellow, and mix these two together. If you want it to be on the crisper, cooler green side, go heavier on viridian. If you want it to be a warmer, earthier toned leaf, go heavier on yellow ochre. If you want to, you could mix it with ye uh, lemon yellow, and that'll make a really crisp, sap green-esque, green. But I want mine to be a little bit warmer. So I'm going a little bit heavier on the yellow ochre side. And I'm going to go ahead and just do a, a solid layer of paint. And notice how I'm using my uh, the tip of this paintbrush to kind of drop color right in that tip and it's creating that serrated edge. See, really easy to do it that way. It's a nice little trick to do it quicker. So just point and pull back into the leaf. 
adding a little bit of water. I'm gonna uh, dilute this color just a little bit. And you can just also do this, you could do a reverse technique. So you would press down your brush and then lift just at the end and it'll create that point for you. I don't know if you're like me, but when I used to have those brushes that got way too old and all the ends were all <laughs> fanned out. I kept them for way too long <laughs> and I would, it's really hard to create detail if your brush doesn't have that nice point, or at least if some of your brushes don't have that nice point. And yeah, you should have seen the brushes I used to use. It was, it was bad. <laughs> and then I started making sure that I always had a nice tip and it's a game changer. All right, so you'll notice there's kind of this fun little, that bleed, that little bleed watercolor bloom that happened on my paper here. I think I'm just gonna leave it, see how this turns out. The old me would always smooth out everything, but these days I'm, I think I like a little bit of imperfection and natural, natural water movement in my painting. I think it creates some interest. So I'm gonna just use the same color. I'm just grabbing a little bit more of it and I am going to accentuate these little veins that I drew earlier. And the paper's still wet, so it's taking that color and it's bleeding it out, just kind of diffusing that color and that's fine. And we'll come back and we'll, we'll fine tune this leaf quite a bit later, but. All right, now I'm gonna clean my brush off. Once you finish that, clean your brush off. And I'm gonna to switch to a smaller brush here. So I'll switch over to my little brush and I'm gonna get a mixture of burnt sienna and viridian green. So I want this mixture to be heavier on the burnt sienna and we're gonna um, paint this stem. So I don't want to just use pure burnt sienna because I think it is a little bit too orange for a stem. Burnt sienna is kind of a pumpkin spice latte color and I want this to be more of like a true branch. So it needs to be more of a brown. So adding that viridian green is a really great way to get to brown really quickly. And then once you've got a nice brown mixture on your brush here on your palette, let's go ahead and drop this in. And just go ahead and come right up to the leaf, but don't touch it because your leaf might be a little bit wet still. Mine isn't, so I'm going to go ahead and touch it. But just be mindful that if you've got a super wet leaf here, you know, they're gonna bleed into one another and you might not want that. Same up here, continue that stem. And then we have the stem that is running perpendicular or yeah, perpendicular, right? Not parallel, perpendicular. <laughs> it just turns into that T shape. And I also want to draw a bit of brown on the grape stem. And then a bit of brown on the leaf stem. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix in a little bit more green a little bit more green from this mixture I was messing with earlier. And then go ahead and continue that on. And same thing right here. All right, I don't know if you'll be able to see it super clearly, but you know how it, I just made it so this here is more of a darker brown and then it's kind of fading into a green as it heads into that leaf there. 
you don't have to do it like that. You could do just green and it's gonna look awesome. It's a small detail. Okay, and then using that same small brush, go ahead and do our little, let's do our little flourishes. Keep your arm relaxed for this part. This is this is a this requires a light touch and a relaxed, relaxed arm. So go ahead and just don't overthink it. It can be kind of wonky and it's gonna look great. Same thing up here. Swirl it around. Great. Kind of inconsistent weights and that's totally fine. It's a painting. This is not a photograph, it's a painting. Okay, so let's move back to our grades. It's time to start to really bring some, some depth in. So let me show you. Here's what we're trying to get to. So notice how I have some grits that are really light and some that feel like they're further back, kind of pressed back into the shadows a little bit. So the way we're going to do that is I want to start adding some green to our mixture. So let's grab some Viridian green. And I'm gonna bring it over here to my yellow, yellow mixes here. And I'm going to go ahead and get some yellow ochre and viridian green mixed. Heavier on yellow ochre, I would say. So this is creating more of a desaturated green, not super vibrant. All right, and I'll go ahead and switch brushes here. I'm gonna to switch to my medium sized brush. So I'm gonna to switch to my size six. Making sure I got a good amount of color here because I'm gonna keep reaching back for it. So I wanna have a good stash over here. And let's see, where would be a good place to start? I'm gonna go ahead and start working on some of the grapes that are obviously gonna be pressed back in shadow. So if there's a leaf, I'm sorry, if there's a grape that is like this one right here, there's one, two, three, four grapes overlapping it. It's just gonna make sense that that one's gonna be a little bit darker, right? So this is where you gotta use just some, some critical thinking skills here. What, which ones would it make sense to be a little bit darker? So go ahead and drop some green in there. You can use another brush that's damp to smooth that color out. I don't want it to be too dark. If you go too dark, which I maybe just did, just use your, your paper towel and you can lift that color out a little bit. And let me go ahead and just come in a little bit closer for you as I'm doing this detailed um, section of this painting. So go ahead and just drop in that greenish yellow mixture. Wherever it makes sense for there to be some shadow. So if there's two grapes, if there's one on top of the other, look at that shadow with my hand. Notice how it creates that darker shadow on my right hand here when it's overlapped like that. And then also it's creating shadow right here on this side of my hand. <laughs> I don't have very round shaped hands, but you understand. So this side of the grape, we would want there to be a little bit of green on this side as well. A little bit of green over here. And the trick here also is just don't go too heavy with this mixture here. You can always add darker and darker values, but you don't wanna to go too dark too quickly. The trick to make anything look round is basically just to have the center be lighter and the outer edges be darker. Pretty much as simple as that, but you do want it to create a nice gradient. You, wanna, you don't wanna just have like a ring of dark. You need to smooth that color out a little bit. So I like to use a technique. If you've taken a class with me before, you know, I love to use two paintbrushes. 
So I like to use one to drop color and then one to smooth that color once I drop it. So drop color and then smooth it out with a damp, clean brush. So I'm always rinsing it off, trying to keep it clean and trying to just keep it damp so it's not a soaking wet brush. The nice thing is once you understand this technique, you get to just practice it over and over and over and over again on this painting, right? It's good practice. Very repetitive technique here. I am curious to know also, I'm not sure, how, how many of you guys sketched this with me and how many of you sketched it beforehand? I've never asked that, but I am always curious whenever I'm sketching it, if I'm just sketching it by myself, because I've always wondered if everybody's already done it. Lana says with you, okay, cool. Before, before, before with you, okay. Yeah. So most people before, um, I, I have recommended before in other classes that a good, a good method might be to have it sketched beforehand, but to also sketch it with me, just practice um, freehand sketching, because that's a really, really important skill to have, I, I think, um, especially if you want to create really realistic paintings. Practicing drawing is so important. And it's, I would say in so, its own way, it's, it's kind of harder than painting, I think. But yeah, I think having the sketch ready before, but always just grab a sheet of paper and sketch along with you just to just practice that skill. So this is the repetitive part, just dropping it all around, especially wherever there would be some shadow. Something else you could do that could be kind of fun is maybe there's moments where you use more of a viridian green mixture. So let's try that. Like if I use more heavy on the viridian green side, so it's more of that crisper green in just a few spots. And I am using these two brushes pretty interchangeably. I don't know about you, but sometimes I'll accidentally switch from one brush being the dropping brush to then being the scrubbing brush happens all the time. I actually really like that mixture being a little bit heavier on the viridian green side. Got a really nice color to it. Sometimes I think I don't like a certain color like for example, to be honest, I don't like viridian green in its pure form. It's never, it's not a color I would ever use just as a leaf. Like I, I don't think I would ever really use it. It's just a little bit too vibrant neon color. And I like my colors to be a little bit more earthy and desaturated. But like I said, I did a huge color mixing palette recently for my Patreon class. I was teaching a class last month all about color. And I did a limited eight color palette. And I just did as many mixtures as I could with eight colors. And um, I didn't use Viridian, I used Windsor Green, which is very, very similar to Viridian Green. And oh my goodness, I was able to get so many green colors. So like I said, Viridian, it's a new, it's a new favorite or Windsor Green. All right, I'm gonna try and, I'm gonna try and speed up a little bit. Christine said, when you sketch, you understand your subject. That's very true. Very, very true.
All right, so a technique here I'm trying is I'm just gonna paint a bunch of them at once, and then I'll come back and smooth out that color. So instead of doing one at a time, you can just drop that color kind of quickly and then come back and smooth it out a little bit. All right, just take an inventory for a second here. I think I want some darker values in here. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of that yellow ochre, grab a little bit more viridian. And just in those spots where it makes sense for there to be a darker shadow. So maybe right here where there's two overlapping, makes sense for that to be a dark spot, right? Doesn't that just look right? Maybe just here on this bottom side of this outer grape. Maybe inside here, where we're seeing just a tiny, tiny bit of those grapes that are peeking out. A little bit back here. I get asked a lot when when you know that you're done with a with a painting or a particular part of your painting. And I heard somebody say recently, you'll know you're done when you've overdone it. <laughs> I think that's true. I think my instinct is usually to go, to maybe over, overwork a painting uh, rather than under, underdo it. So I'm trying to work on that. But you'll probably find that if you really wanted to, you could just do this all day, right? There's always going to be a little bit more you can add, a little bit more detail. So I'll, I'll stop for right. I'll stop for right now on those breaks, and I'm going to come back to this leaf. So for my leaf, I want more interest. Right now, it feels a little bit flat. It's just one color, and I'm going to come back to this Viridian mixture. What if I mix it up? What if I added a little bit of burnt sienna to it and see what that color looks like? It's already just beautiful. What a beautiful color. Viridian green and burnt sienna. So let's go ahead and drop that green mixture in a few of these veins. So I'm using my medium brush. I'm going to grab my larger brush, my size eight. Clean it off, blot it on a paper towel, and then I'm going to smooth that out just a little bit. So we'll kind of create these nice feathered um, paint lines here. You can go ahead and drop paint all along the center vein. Trace these veins that I drew earlier. And then I'm using my large brush, using that damp, clean edge, to smooth it out. So it just has a nice gradation. Now I'm going to do a mixture that's a little bit heavier on the viridian green side. I want a little bit more green in just a few spots. So this mixture is very desaturated, almost like a brown green, but I want there to be a few moments where there's more of that crisp green. So we kind of have that mixture of cool green and warm green in this leaf. Something I like to do while I paint is I like to squint at my subject and squinting really helps to see less detail. So you're able to see the painting as a whole and I'm able to like see what I wanna do next, what needs a little bit more work, how the overall impression is. I think that that's 
that's what it is. You're getting an impression of your painting rather than getting kind of stuck on little tiny details. And you know, as when you paint with watercolors, generally you're painting on a smaller surface than if you were painting like a large canvas. So, you know, we're right up close to our painting. So sometimes it's hard to see, like it's hard to step back from it and really get a perspective of the whole piece. So squint at it from time to time. I think that'll help you know if you're in danger of overdoing it or if you need to add a little bit more. So I'm just darkening some of these little tips here. I think my leaf over here on this right side could use a little bit, a little bit more depth. So I'm using my medium brush, my size six brush. Drop a little bit more of this. This is kind of a warmer green. So this is a little heavier on the burnt sienna side. You might notice that my leaf feels a little bit darker on this side which maybe makes it feel like there's just a little bit of a shadow right there. Maybe just underneath these grapes, the leaf is gonna be a little bit darker. Wouldn't that make sense for it to be a little bit in shadow right there? You can drop a little bit of extra color just around those, leaf, uh, those um, grapes and it's gonna really make those grape, grapes pop. A little bit heavy handed there, so we'll just lift it out with a paper towel. All right, I'm taking inventory of everything here. I think I, I, think I feel pretty good about this one. So I think that's a good place to for me to stop. If you still need to keep working on it, by all means, keep working on it. So what I would do now is I would just give this time to, to really dry before I would try to erase any of these pencil markings. And if yours is like mine, you probably are able to see quite a bit of those pencil markings. So just give it, just give it some time, erase it as best you can. And if you can't erase it all, it's okay. <laughs> That's, um, that gives it charm. It gives it character to see pencil markings. So here's the original one I did. Here's the one from today, same colors, but notice how every single time you paint it, it's just always gonna look a little bit different. The mixtures are never exactly 100% the same, different every time. So I'll let this dry. Something I wanted to show you guys before we, um, before we finish today. So we don't have another class lined up for right now, but I was talking to Tim about how maybe, maybe for our next class, it might be fun to do something like one of these paintings I have here in my sketchbook. Um, so last year, I guess it was last winter, I got really into painting these kind of loose um, sketchbook spreads where there's just a bunch of colors. I didn't overthink it. Nothing is overworked. Everything is very loose. And I also included a background, which is kind of fun in both of these paintings. So let me know if this would be something that would interest you guys for future class, kind of a loose, wild feeling. <laughs> Okay, I see some yeses. That's good. So we can try doing that. I can't keep track of the yeses right now. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, I think this would be a great class for an hour or two. Um, so if I give you this class, is everybody in the audience going to attend this class for me? There's like 300 people in here tonight. So if you're all telling me 300 are going to come back, I, you guys I have promise? to try to get the class. Look, oh, my goodness, it's going so fast. Oh, autumn color. I saw that autumn color. Um, so That's everybody in the audience, too. I'm going to save the chat. And if I make this class happen, I'm going to check every one of you to make sure that you're all back in this class. <laughs> oh, that makes me so happy. And somebody asked what kind of sketchbook this is. I actually made this myself. Do a quick sketchbook tour, huh? Um, but I made this myself and I just kind of folded the papers and I stitched it all together. I have a class on my Patreon all about how to make your own um, watercolor sketchbook. So if you're interested in that. Also, we have a class in the um, 
You can find it in the archives. I taught a Michael's class on how to paint this little orange blossom. But I love having a sketchbook. It's it's so fun for just, if I, this is nothing. Like, what is this? Like, this is just me practicing, but it's fun. I just have a place for it. There's, an also, there's also a class where we did the sunflower. So you can find that in the archives. We did a class on yarrow. Um, these are just- no, I, I have an idea, Shaleen. Do you have, so are these pictures up on your website or Instagram or, or anything like that? No, these are secret. <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> some of maybe, them are. We, like this is a class. We did a class. Maybe something if, if you have a couple of ones that people were saying, yeah, that they love them and they want a class on them. Maybe um, if you picked like three of them and maybe showed yeah. a picture and said one, two, you know and three. And maybe if everybody in the audience would go onto your site or go onto Instagram, and, Instagram and like maybe yeah. vote for one of the classes, then we have a really good understanding of, of what people, you know, which one that you'd want to center because they look like there, there's a lot involved. So we'd have to make sure that we can do that within our one hour long class that we have here, but it yes. would be the, uh, like an audience choice, you know, the, the one that everybody- I can do that on my Instagram stories. So if you guys are following me um, on Instagram, I'll do a poll on there, maybe later today. Should I do it soon? I'll do it right away, why not? Sure. So I'll post a few and you guys can let me know um, which ones you like. And yeah, some of these are just, they were kind of just like mindless. I just wanna do something different. And just a page of leaves, leaves. Um, so, like this is this is not something I would share anywhere. But here you are in my sketchbook. So, <laughs> so, um, so for so everybody in the audience, I dropped in your addresses on there. I think your Facebook is on there. That's Patreon, YouTube, Patreon. Instagram, your website. Some people who don't have that, you know, go on onto. You can. I'm sure you can message something in the Facebook and comment back on something on there for Shalene's class. Um, or the website, send you an email if they just look at the picture to vote on it. And then we can look at seeing at which one uh, we can do because everybody seemed to like those pictures that you have in there, so. Cool, well, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of things that would work for about an hour long class because nothing is- Yeah, we can always maybe scale it down, you know, not as big, a little smaller, mm -hmm. pick some here and there and, and we can see where we could make yeah, something yeah. like that happen. Well, I think what I like about these ones is that they are, they feel very full of detail and life and color and movement but they're loose so because they're loose you don't have to like you know like for this great class there's a lot more detail that went into this um if i was painting this in a loose style it, i would have it done in five minutes so these are all very loose elements and it makes it a lot quicker so anyways um also before we sign off i would actually love if, if everybody would if you paint it along, if you feel confident to show your painting, I would love it if, if you would hold it up for me. And I'm looking through the gallery here. Oh, awesome. These are beautiful. Thank you so much for showing these to me. Love it. And I can tell some people sketched it freehand because it doesn't look just like the sketch. Beautiful colors. Awesome. Great so work, great. everyone. Really good job. Yeah, I love it. Well, I think that's all we have for today. So follow me on Instagram or go to shaleenlouise.com slash subscribe. And I always hold, hold that up. Um, I always let people know when I'm teaching a, an upcoming Michaels class. So just make sure you're on that email list and we'll let you know when the next class is. Um, but got it, got it's definitely something in the fall. So just stay tuned for that. Yeah, I can give people an idea just off the top of my head. We don't have it planned in there yet, but it would be, I think it is October. So you'll probably see something come up within the next few weeks onto the Michael site for the bookings and stuff like that. So please check and you'll see in the title, Shalene's name will be in there for the class, Cotman, Windsor, Newton, and Shalene's name, so. Awesome. Well, thanks everybody. Have a beautiful day and thanks for being here today. Well, let me add one question before everybody leaves. In case you wanted to get the chat tra uh, transcript on there, go in the chat box, hit the three little dots that says more and it will say, allow you to actually save the chat, save the chat, hit the button and it will put it in somewhere on your computer. I think it's under my documents versus Zoom class chats. So there's a lot of information in the chat today. People will want that. So I'm saving it. I never save it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.